ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, it's the Natural Born Thriller, and welcome everyone to Impact Wrestling Review, the show from March 23rd, 2021, where they're at Jacksonville, well, not Jacksonville, Nashville, Tennessee, I should say, this is not AEW, all at the Skyway Studios, your commentators were Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown, and let's start off here, the show opened up where they're hyping up the return of AW World Champion Kenny Omega with Don Callis. Uh, and we'll get to that later on. It basically built up more um, heat for the match between Kenny Omega and Rich Swan, where the winner take all for both world titles. Rich Swan being the double champion of the Impact and TNA World Heavyweight Championship, while Kenny Omega being the AW World Champion. Uh, that's going to happen at Rebellion. Meanwhile, they're still building up uh, ma uh, matches for. Uh, this week coming on Saturday of Hardcore Justice, built, promoted, um, by Tommy Dreamer. And wouldn't surprise me if he ends up with um, some type of match as well, but we'll see. But, nevertheless, Knockouts Champion Dion Perrazzo with Susan at ringside. Susan. Versus Jazz and Jordan Grace at ringside. Uh, so yes, this is Dion Perrazzo versus Jazz in the match. It was just uh, an exhibition. And the match itself I thought was doing good. Susan did get involved uh, a little bit. Um, but Jazz took care of herself out um, and retains the whole thing. Uh, Jordan Grace saw that on that part what happened. Uh, um, and she knew that Jazz could do um, you know, uh, herself justice. But then um, Susan got involved again later on. Uh, and that's when Jordan Grace uh, had enough and got involved. And Susan threw a shoe. Oh, by the way, before it happened, we get to that part. Uh, Susan um, lure Jordan Grace to uh, you know, you know, basically retains to Susan on uh, trying to run away from her and all that, and also also sends her into the ring post. So Jordan Grace was out for for a while, while this led to Susan to uh, throw a shoe at Jazz, and then Dion Perazzo follows up with a roll up, you know, basically because the veteran uh, you know, uh, was outsmarted, and Dion Perazzo uh, rolled up uh, Jazz for the win. Now, the match itself, I thought it was good until that stupid finish they did. I did not like the finish. I especially don't like the fact that Jan Perazzo needed someone like a Susan to, to beat Jazz. And on top of that, Jan Perazzo is the knockouts champion. You're telling me that, uh, that Jan Perazzo needs Susan to win matches now? You're telling me that she needs help all of a sudden to win matches even though she's beaten Jordan Grace to become knockouts champion in the first place? She doesn't need any help uh, winning matches. The Dion Prosser that I've I've seen watch um you know over the years, she did not she did not need any help from anyone to win matches. Not especially when chance to win the knockouts title. So I didn't like that. I thought that was stupid. And just wanna say before we move on, uh there was no Kimberly there because Kimberly um uh, got hurt. I don't remember uh what was the injury that she got hurt, but that that stupid uh twelve minute, twelve knockouts uh, tag match that they did, I meant to say. Um but yeah, uh, but she's gonna be out for a while. I don't know when she's gonna be back. So, so, um, so that's that's that. Eddie Edwards tells the Good Brothers to stop trying to make friends with the boys, uh, because you know the Good Brothers were in the um, in the back with the boys and all that. Um, even though we don't know who who they are. Uh, but Eddie uh Edwards is talking to the Good Brothers to, you know, just leave the locker room, whatever. And they're like, you know, we don't need this anyway. We're, we're gonna go hang out with. Uh, Kim Mingo and Don Callis, you know, and that was, and they also they bumped into the decay, you know, the, the good person they bumped into the decay. So I'm, I don't know if that's gonna be the um the program they're gonna be doing after Rebellion, because the good birds are still gonna uh going you know they're gonna still go after the tag belts of, you know, returns to Finn Juice, you know, the Impact uh, World Tag Team Champions, uh for Rebellion. So, but Decay are uh, saying that their popularity has been decayed, and that was it. So I know that's going to lead to a program later on afterwards, but we'll see. Uh, but that's basically all, you know, a little teaser, a cliffhanger there of what they're going to be doing. So. And fuck A words, by the way. Um, I'll get to more of that later, by the way. Cause that, is, that ends up being the main event. You know, uh, A words versus um, Carl Anderson. We get uh, a Swingers Palace advertisement. Basically, uh, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. 
basically is the, the theme of it is try your luck at Swingers Palace. And they did this um, you know, advertisement where it tends to having Alicia Edwards being there smoking a cigarette, even though the, the cigarette's not even light, light up. And she's talking. Oh my god, she's talking again. Annoying, annoying Alicia Edwards. You know what? She was doing better when she was not talking. When she, she was just sitting there and looked pretty. Um, you also had, um, you know, uh, Johnny Bravo, oh, who was there. Uh, obviously, uh, he works for Johnny Swinger. And he said he loves it and, all that and everything. And then all of a sudden, he's like, uh, is, that, is that good? Basically, you know, while it's still rolling and all that, this basically what <laughs> it was supposed to be. Um, uh, you know, designed that way, but it was, uh, it was supposed to be designed to be one of the most unprofessional ads they have ever done. And they and it's and they, they were in, you know, just just what you know what they're doing is illegal, which it is illegal they're doing, and and it's and then somehow they get away with, with it. <laughs> but <laughs> and they try Swinger Man, you know, he's the um, you know, the focal point of this of this whole thing, and we also we see. The Swinger, the Swinger Relas, excuse me. Um, so yeah, um, two of them are decent. Obviously, one of them I think is more decent than, than the three, and then the other one, um, you know, since um, you know, saying I'm saying you know, there's three of them, um, because two of them looks decent, but the other one, not so decent at all. The one, the one with, with the tattoos. But uh, they ended by you know, um, uh, try your luck at Swinger's Palace, and they wait for a queue to uh to end. And they're looking, then they're doing this, something like that. Uh, oh, something similar to so that. Um, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, it was fun. It was funny though. It was. It, I I liked it. Swingers Palace is getting over. Uh, you know, uh, routines to all uh, these segments on Impact Wrestling. Um, and I'm pretty sure it works out for the Asylum because the Asylum, uh, you know, are spared of watching watching you know giant Swinger wrestling matches. So, um. I guess to me to a degree of uh, myself as well, but I, I start I, he's strong growing to, he's strong growing to me now, Johnny Stringer. He's really um you know really growing to me. So there you go. Rohit Raju catches up with Fala Ba sleeping in the impact zone. Because he lost all of his money. <laughs> so we're in the point now where Fala Ba Went from stealing money from Hernandez, you know, for the wedding that he never paid for, to help, the, you know, he never helped pay for. I mean to say, to having the money being stolen by Fire and Flavor, and then Fire and Flavor's money gets stolen by Johnny Stringer, which created uh, Stringer's Palace. To follow up, uh, you know, you know, bit, uh, you know, losing all this money uh, for losing a lot of, uh, of all these card games uh, at Stringer's Palace. So going out to her, try to uh, you know take money from Hernandez, not in a way to really take it from him, but uh, but you know, because he uh, he he's an investor. To losing that money uh, at Stringer's Palace. To now he's sleeping um in 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 uh Skyway Studios of the Impact Zone. Because I guess now he's um he's he's broke and he lost his home, whatever. That's <laughs> so Rohit right, Raju is basically crapping on him, insulting him, and all that. Fabal gets angry and challenges him to a match, and we'll get to that. And Rohit right, Raju, by the way, destroyed his um his tent, yo, because Fabal left to uh to talk to uh Scott Moore to make the match official. So, anyways. Uh, Exhibition Champion uh, Ace Austin with Mammoth Full Tent Ringside versus TJP for the Exhibition Championship. And the match itself between Ace Austin and TJP was a better match that they had uh, from Sacrifice. I'm not saying the, ma the match was terrible because that was, that was a good match too. But this one uh, really uh, was was uh, really um, good because it added more drama into it. Because Mammoth Full Tent, this time he was getting involved uh, of the match. And but I love the back and forth between Ace Austin and TJP. And TJP uh, hit the M Mamba Splash, which is his finishing move. And he was going to get the win there. He's going to become the exhibition champion again. And, I, and I, I, would, I would have been fine with that, too. Because at least it's not Manic this time winning the belt. It's TJP as himself. But Man Man, but Man, Man Fulton gets in there and breaks it up. And by the way, uh, there was a, a bump that Man Man Fulton took because, um, I guess, like, like a miscommunication or whatever. Or it was, or, or, or was some type of uh, strategy, strategy they came up with but uh but it backfire some or some way some way of that happened but yeah um TJP uh almost was this close to winning the belt 
But my man Fulton gets in there, breaks it up, and calls it a DQ. So TJP wins, but doesn't win the belt. So yeah, I'll, either way, I would I would be fine the uh, TJP winning uh, win this match. Uh, yeah, I know it would cut uh, you know the title range short of Ace Austin. Um, but at least uh, it would have been better if TJP as himself instead of Manic winning the belt. So they continue on the assault after that, and then. Josh Alexander comes out, makes a save, and that was it for that one. And we'll get to uh, what happened, uh, you know, prior of, of that. So there you go. Gia Miller, she goes goes to have this sit down interview with Matt Cardona. Speaks about the issues with himself and Brian Myers. That Matt Cardona uh, follow him to Impact Wrestling. Yeah, you know, that's 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 basically uh, the the question of it. Um. So he answers by saying that it was a complete um, co coincidence that they both ended up in Impact Wrestling. Sure. Even though Matt Cardona was supposed to be part of, you know, AEW. And then all of a sudden Brian Myers ends up being, uh, decided to be with Impact Wrestling. And then Matt Cardona ends up being in, in Impact Wrestling. So yeah, it was not no coincidence. I don't want to hear anything about any coincidence. But anyways, uh, but that's the story they want to tell us, though. Uh, but anyways, at the end of the day, they are both here at Impact Wrestling. Um, you know, things to having opportunities. Macarena says that he uh, doesn't want to to fight Brian Myers, but he continues to run his mouth as he as he will. Macarena lays out the challenge to Mac, you know, Brian Myers. Excuse me. Once it's over, uh, they'll be done and. You know, and with each other uh, once, um, and all for all and everything, whatever, and everything. So I guess you know, once they have, once they have this match, uh, all will be forgiven in the end of the day. So we'll see. Um, uh, but the interview was good though. Uh, I just didn't like the fact that uh, you know, uh, the whole thing when he added the whole uh, don't be in there and Pac it, it was a coincidence, even though it's not. It, it, that's not the case at all. It, that was no coincidence. Um, Sammy Callahan. Let's see. Oh yeah, I remember now. So, at the solution to Sammy Callahan, Trey Miguel was being confronted by Triple XL. Oh, I'm sorry, um, okay, I remember now. Uh, the, um, it started with Trey Miguel was enraged. He was throwing stuff around, and, uh, and apparently he, um, uh, to round up the, the bags of Triple XL, and they got upset with that. And Trey Miguel was gonna pick up a fight with them, and then Tommy Dreamer stops the fight and everything. Um, you know, before it, before it got out of hand, and Tommy Dreamer uh vowed for uh for hardcore justice for Triple XL, Trey Miguel to be in the match, an exploding ball wire death match. I. So then, Tommy Dreamer says something about just kidding, whatever, something like that. I didn't think it was funny. You know, I tried to forget the whole thing with uh, AW's uh, botch of that exploding bar war deathmatch um, from that main event from Revolution. And the fact that Tommy Dreamer had to bring it up on Impact Wrestling. So I guess, you know, Impact Wrestling was okay that AW uh, you know, retains to John Moxley come that promo that um, Impact Wrestling paid for it. And then for Tommy Dreamer to come in there and to uh, make make a joke of it too as well, thinking that uh you know you're, you're just making a, a joke of it and all that. Uh, but Trey Miguel doesn't care about being a hard, part of hardcore just whatever. Um, and Tommy Dreamer is basically uh, telling Trey Miguel basically having a little pet talk and everything, and that was it. Uh, not much to say about that. So, who cares? Ray Raju versus Fabba match uh went uh as I thought it would. Uh, uh it, it was quick, and Fabba loses. Well, at least you got some money now because you, even if you do lose a match, you still get paid when, when you wrestle. So, but not now as much though. The winners gets paid more than the than the, than the losers. So, so Rick Rousey wins. He didn't just win; he beat them all by cheating. So, he he pulled the tights. So that's how he won. So, no one say my match just was okay. I'll I'll say that it was okay. Uh, Gio Miller has some words where pertains to the AW World Champion Kenny Omega. Uh, but Don Callis uh denies her and 
says that they are on the way to the uh, to the ring, and she's uh you know having a smile on her face, like everything is all good and everything and blah blah blah. Reminds me of Dasha Gonzalez when she was back when when she was um as Dasha Flendes from WWE. <laughs> Except um she looked like she was very happy, um because she she doesn't work for NWE now so, uh Gina Miller I'm not, not sure that she ever did but I'm just saying, um. But who knows? Maybe she has. Maybe she hasn't. Maybe she, since her being uh, an enhancement talent for them. But I don't know. I, dig I digress. Uh, AEW owner Tony Khan and AEW commentator Tony Schiavone, uh, returned for another uh, paid advertisement for pertains to AEW Dynamite. Uh, pertains to the fallout of weapon uh, from St. Patrick's Day Slam. And yeah, we want to say about that. And talk about you know, I. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember now. They also had uh, AW World Champion Kenny Omega and Don Callis join on with them, um, you know, uh, for this pay, pay advertisement, which I'm pretty, pretty sure that was an earlier, that was an early, uh, 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 recording of it, you know, and then the air day there because we get to what, what's going to happen next. Um, but before we do, uh, we get to the Good Brothers. They're not on the on the, on the locker room door of Kenny Omega and Don Callis, on Don Callis, but they're not there though. So they're thinking to themselves, um. They don't want to uh, let them in because since lots of tie belts and everything to the fin juice that they don't want to have, have anything to do with the Good Brothers. Basically, they have, the Good Brothers have this conspiracy theory now that Kenny Omega and Don Castle doesn't need the Good Brothers anymore because now all of a sudden they're not the tag champions anymore. They're useless. That's basically uh, the, 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 um, the conspiracy that's going on here right now. Um, so, there you go. It was stupid, by the way. It was, the, the, the way that was done, that was so stupid. And fuck Eddie Edwards. <laughs> Anyways, um, um, AW World Champion Kenny Omega and Don Callis. Um, so they cut a promo here, and basically, um, it was about the title versus title match where it seems to Rich Swan defending against Kenny Omega at Rebellion. You know, we're take all thing. Don Callis makes a a bold prediction that Kenny Omega will win at Rebellion and to win both belts. Um, you know, basically, uh, walking in with the AW belt, walking out with it, um, and with uh, along with the Impact TNA World Title belts as well, and the victory will come uh via the One Way the Angel, and Don Cal's uh debut uh, of a video vignette of Kenny Omega's famous uh, finishing move that he's um beating with everyone uh and, you know pretends to uh, um put on the One Way Angel, and then Kenny Omega uh, sends a message to to Rich Swan, calling him uh in in Cypher it's, a, it's, it's I'm trying to remember how that's pronounced. Insignification? Insignification? I don't know. Uh, and he's going to be a footnote at the end of the day. Uh, Don Cal states that once uh, at Rebellion, uh, he and Kenny Omega will make history. I thought the promo was good though, uh, especially with Kenny Omega. Uh, very, very good promo. Um, Eric Young says that Rhino was reborn. Uh, for the uh to be uh uh in the violent by design, we're seeing uh you know with the un with the unholy water or the, or the holy water, whatever on um, that Eric Young said that he has um you know awakened him, so he became the killer that he once was. And there you go. Gia Miller catches up with Havoc and Nevea, uh after they were on the on the on the winning side of things. Uh, from that uh, total women's, uh, you know, the total knockouts uh, match, which I thought was trouble again. Uh, now they have the mo, uh, the, the motivation and the, uh, and now they have the uh, momentum of getting back to tap, you know, to go, to go back, you know, to go at, to go after the titles, I should say, because then they were the tag champions. Um, and also we get to, Fire and Flavor interrupting the interview, and basically denying all the opportunities. Now, if you want to shoot opportunities, you got to um, you got to beat us. So, that's yeah, basically that, that whole thing. So they are uh, confronted by, and I'm talking about uh, having the layer here because uh, Fire and Flavor ends up leaving afterwards. Also, they get confronted by uh, Tina Dashwood and Kim Uh Tina Dashwood uh, suggests that Nevea uh, leaves Havoc to form a team with her and everything, and she did not want to uh, do it. So there you go. Number six about that. That's that's to come from the, from the next uh, review. AC Ramiro with Larry D versus Trey Miguel. That match was made by the way. 
Um, so that was made because um, Triple XL uh, went to Katamori, whatever. So match happens. Wasn't uh, that long. Uh, Dream Miguel wins. Uh, he beats uh, you know, Ace, uh, Ace Romero with a uh, Meteor. After the match, uh, both members end up beating him down on Dream Miguel. All of a sudden, in a uh, bizarre twist here, Sammy Callahan appears and saves Trey Miguel. And after he did that, Trey Miguel realized that he saved him. And he has he, uh, he had a look at his face like, like he wants to kill Sam Callahan. Also, Sam Callahan disappears because, you know, pressing the phone, you know, you know he's, he's still the, uh, the ICU hacker. And he was gone. Your guess is as good as mine, but we'll get to that on the next review of the Impact Wrestling. Rich Swan, the Impact World Champion and the TNA World Champion, he responds to the comments that I made to the AW World Champion, Kenny Omega, and to Don Callis, saying that, basically telling GM Miller, because GM Miller was interviewing him, that he was um, you know, battling um, you know, uh, adversities uh, for his, in his whole life, and the mind games don't uh, affect him at all. Says that uh, he missed that Kenny Omega uh, did put away all. Uh, you know him, um, the woman Angel back at Hard to Kill, uh, which I was, I was also referenced to by the way. Um, I didn't get to mention that part. And says that he got the best of all of them. Uh, but the response said that he will have a counter for that for that move, Everbillion, and he will be ready to go all night long. Lionel Richie. Um, and there you go, folks. A uh, good promo there from uh, Rich Swan, and yeah, as always, he's got that cool. Promo that you would that, that the way the way he just does it. Jim Miller interviews James Storm and Chris Sabin as James Storm approaches his one thousandth match in Impact Wrestling. It's got the more um overheard that James Storm was being loud and everything, but tends to him on um, camera to celebrate his one thousand um uh, Impact Wrestling match, and he just he just he's just you know it's got the more suggested uh where it tends to you know divine by design um that James Storm should wrestle against. Uh, uh, Impact Wrestling veteran in Eric Young, and that'll be uh that'll be uh, uh talk about on the next review of, of Impact Wrestling. Speaking of Impact Wrestling, uh, for the next review I'll be doing for Impact Wrestling, the Knockouts champion, the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, Fire and Flavor, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steels versus Havoc and Nevaeh in the non title match. You know the whole thing where if the challengers. Uh, you know, if the, if the challengers beat the champions, then the challengers will get an opportunity against the champions to time for the titles on the line, which I fucking hate. And I'm, and I'm gonna hate a lot more of what what they did at the afterwards. Um, we'll we'll get, we'll get that review um after this. But uh, also the ex wrestling champion Ace Austin and Matt Man Fulton will be taking on Josh Alexander and TJP tag team match. And finally, Kenny Omega, the AW World Champion with Don Callis, will once again appear on the at the Impact Zone. And there's a lot more. And we'll get to that when we get to the next that that on to that next review. Now we get to the main event, which I oh, was not a fan of this main event, folks. It's Don I mean not Don Callis. <laughs> uh, we want we want him wrestling in the main event. Um, um but it's Machine Gun Car Anderson being accompanied by the big LG Doc Gallus versus Eddie Edwards. And that's no reason. And that's basically, uh, you know, basically just two reasons why I don't care about the main event. Um, the Good Brothers are to me go away heat now, but even more go away heat of Eddie Edwards, who I can't stand more. Eddie Edwards does it make it any better when it comes to uh, watching um, the Carl Anderson wrestling against Eddie Edwards. No, but they had this match. Didn't care for it at all, that much. Um, Doc Gallus got involved a little bit. Brian had uh, forced him to sit, sit on the chair. If you get him, uh, you know, basically, um, you know, you stay right there, whatever. He did. Um, I think there was like a referee bump. I can't remember if there was or not. Or something about, about referee didn't see it. You know, and by the way, the referee was Brian Hitler, by the way. Um, but Doc Gallus got involved. And uh, uh, because of that, um, basically, was, he, how, how this happened. So anyways, was also a car incident, but I uh, guess pushed off. Into the steel chair by, okay by uh by Gallows. Referee didn't see it because um I guess Carl Anderson was holding was I don't, I don't know how it happened I I don't know I don't know I'm, I don't know. This, this match this match was nothing to me I didn't care about this match at all 
And the fact that this was the main event was a joke. And even what's even more a joke is that Eddie Edwards gets hit with a chair because referee didn't see. So basically, two things they protected uh, Eddie Edwards in this match. Carl Anderson then all of a sudden hits him with a uh, spine buster and gets the win. And I'm like, why can't we have Eddie Edwards just lose clean? It's always got to be something uh, to, uh, why Eddie Edwards had to lose. He lose because his, his knee got faint, uh, you know, was favoring him. Um, against Eric Young, and that's why Eric Young became the Impact World Champion. He always had to lose, you know, because oh, he was being distracted by um, what what, what was it? Oh, that match, that match, I can't remember. That he that he had. Jeez, I can't remember. But now this, not now this thing, oh, with Eddie Edwards. Unless I'll think about Marco Stern for that one. Oh, uh, that. That one thing, but that's, that's not here or there. But what the hell, man? You say, oh. so Eddie Edwards lose like I, yeah. Either way, I don't, I don't, I think I don't care for him to win either way. Um, I don't, I didn't want him to win either way. So, uh, at the same time, Carl Anderson, you know, he's not going to beat Eddie Edwards on his own. He's got to um get the other find ways to protect Eddie Edwards of losing because, um because he's one of your big stars in Impact Wrestling. Even though you could do uh, you know you could do um a lot more with Eddie Edwards uh, as um you know as the wrestler instead of uh, being on this this gimmick that he's doing a, a dollar store John Moxley a, a dollar store Tommy Dreamer a dollar store the Sandman ridiculous after the match the Impact World Team Champions they could interview um back in New Japan pro wrestling and they got messages for the Good Brothers that. The tiles are around the waist, and the right, and and those, and let's do that rebellion, and that was it, and like, that was a lame finish. That was really, I was literally a lame finish of I've ever seen on Impact Wrestling. Ridiculous. But that was your Impact Wrestling show from March twenty third, twenty twenty one. Five matches were the tournament wrestling, and that's gonna be my overall show rating. Five out of ten. The, uh, it was a solid show. Um, and that's what I'm gonna say from there. It could have been better, and, and it could have been better. That main event, um, is it, what did it for me. With that being said, thank you for watching. No plugs whatsoever, folks. And I'm gonna end it from there. Um, because again, I'm trying, I'm trying to catch up with everything that's on that I'm trying to do right now. We're just on a chance to catch up with every uh, wrestling reviews right now, especially with Tensei Nutrient Pro Wrestling. So that's why I'm gonna cut it short. So, peace on the streets. Natural Born Jordan meant to say, saying peace on the streets. Take care.